I get my news um, from kind of alternative social justice left-leaning um, outlets. Um, Democracy Now! is um, one outlet that I've known and trusted uh, since I've come to the United States in the late 80s. I actually knew Amy Goodman when she was at WBAI, so um, when she was just starting. Uh, I've always um, been critical about uh, mainstream media outlets, uh, not just growing up in Israel and looking at how the government was using the media as a tool of propaganda, and it could happen in a democracy as well, uh, but also in the States realizing that it was mostly corporate-owned media, so what you God, even in the New York Times, all the news that fit to print, um, was more or less the master narrative, the mainstream one. So I've tried with my students to cultivate a critical understanding of mainstream media outlets, but also to expose them to uh, alternative sources. And then uh, my other source is um, through my Facebook friends, I have close to 4,000 located all over the world, and this is how I get my um, kind of global international perspective from people in those countries consuming critical media that's a more kind of grassroots, uh, bottom-up. What else can I say? I have, I, there's one more thing that I, I actually mentioned to people these days. I have not read the New York Times regularly until the past few weeks. Um, I think now that the New York Times views itself as um, an alternative, uh, since the president declared uh, the media as the enemy of the people, uh, I, I think it's important for us to hold them accountable to that project. So it's not just an opposition to a president, but that um, journalists now that they find themselves under fire, something that uh, journalists in other places with democracies, dictatorship, have learned to deal with, now that that bubble of privilege burst, they are actually accountable, and they are accountable to the people to actually show that uh, there is a mission there, that that pretense of neutrality and objectivity is only something that you can hold uh, in a capitalist society when you're not being threatened or held accountable by the people. Um, and I think now they're being threatened and they need the support um, of people who trust the media outlet, uh, but uh, more people are also depending on them because they are, um, I think the goal of the president and uh, the people that he put in power is to inspire um, mistrust and lack of confidence in the media. And it is precisely because of that that I feel this um, sense of urgency to engage with mainstream journalists. Um, and in a way say welcome welcome to the club of independent media uh, that were always viewed like you know you have an agenda and um, so I think it's important for us to support those journalists that were excluded from the um, from the uh, special briefing uh, a few almost a week ago and um, and actually watch whether the LA Times, who's, who's their um, 
BBC, the New York Times, if these outlets will um, continue to put forth uh, accounts that are critical uh, of this um, kind of very dangerous um, attacks uh, on the basic tenets of democracy and free press is one of them. I, I think then we could question who pays for it as well. You know, for now, what what is dubbed as the liberal media um, was not that liberal. Now that the political spectrum changed and um, the, the entire political map is being redrawn, I think it's important for us to renegotiate the uh, critical conversations between uh, the liberal or liberal leaning mainstream media and uh, uh, independent outlets that were to its left.